I had a question uh, posed to me a few weeks ago about what is the drawing of God, specifically in that phrase, no one comes to me except the Father draw him. That's in John 6.44. Let's go take a look at it. I looked it up here. Here it is. John 6.44. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. What is that? Well, you have to go back a little bit and work up the context to this verse and beyond, because it addresses it a number of times. So, let's take a look at the first reference, which is this. John 6, observe 2.htm, number 6. So I'm going to take a look at that. Browse over here. Going down where we can click on it. This is what it looks like online. Draws. Scroll all the way down. We started, instead of 644, we started John 637. All that the Father gives me, Jesus is saying, God the Father, will come to me. So when the Father has decreed, these will be the gifts to his Son, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And whoever comes to me, literally the one, the coming ones to me, I will never drive away, never cast out. Eternal security. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. Literally the one having sent me. And this is the will of the Father who sent me. All that, that all that he has given to me, the Father has given to Jesus, I may not lose of it, but may raise it up, all those, up in the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me. The alternate reading is of my Father. This is the will of my Father, or the will of him, same, same meaning. Then everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So let's get it. This is the context. We have to go back and build on this. God the Father gave to his Son Jesus Christ as a gift all individuals who will ever choose to come to Jesus in the sense of believing in him for eternal life. Now, no one can come to me unless the Father draws him. So there's the drawing and then the believing. But we're building to that. And all who come by faith to him, he will never cast out in the sense of never denying them eternal life. The done deal between the Father and the Son. And you look back at this. John 6.35 And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. The one who comes to me shall never hunger, and the one who believes in me shall never thirst at any time. John 6.36 But I said to you that you also have seen me, and you believe not. So this is building up to John 6.44 because he's telling the Jews that didn't believe in him. That the only way they could believe in him of their own free will to choose of their own free will, is that the Father draws them. Now what? See, that's still, let's keep looking. Keep in, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me, the literally the coming ones to me, I will never drive away, never cast out. So we're kind of getting a build-up to this. The phrase rendered comes to me in John 6, 37, continues the figure of speech for a moment of faith alone in Jesus Christ alone, resulting in eternal life established in verse 35. By this, Jesus continues his train of thought on who will secure eternal life by stipulating all that the Father gives me will come to me in John 6, 37, implying God's sovereign choosing of individuals, certain individuals, who will then choose to come to faith, a little hand lotion on, in Jesus Christ and to eternal life. So the choosing, but then the individuals will believe of their own volition to choose to believe. 
Okay. Keep reading. The, the word gift is implied by the word given, give, gives, and the phrase rendered, all that the Father gives me. It implies that God has evidently made provision for a number of chosen individuals to come to his Son by faith unto eternal life. All those that are chosen will come to faith in him of their own volition unto eternal life. John 6, and 65 will indicate that God has indeed made provision for certain individuals such that they are drawn by him. Ah, there's the drawn. 6.44, and enabled by him. Ah, John 6.65. So John enabled. See, we're putting the puzzles of the, of the pictures, pieces of the puzzle together. To choose to come to Jesus, his son, by faith, such that these individuals are stipulated as God's gift to his son. Thus, to make this a true gift, there cannot be anyone outside of this elect group of individuals who might come to Jesus by faith on their own without God, and none will. Otherwise, individuals could claim to come to Jesus without God's help. So much for God's sovereignty. But Scripture says that all who come to faith in Jesus are part of God's gift to His Son, giving God all the glory. You know something is amiss. When God does not get all the glory. First of all, he's the supreme individual, uncreated, all sovereign God. So if he needs to if you to cooperate with him in order to accomplish his purpose, he's not omnipotent. Right? <clears throat> he's not all sovereign. So the phrase all that the Father gives me will come to me by faith has the entire population of all those who believe throughout history in view. The second half of the verse says, and whoever comes to me, literally the ones coming to me, I will never drive away, never cast out. So the words ume in the phrase ume ek balo, literally I will never cast out, are an emphatic double negative in the Greek. They picture the eternally secure position of a believer has with Jesus Christ relative to eternal life. He will never cast the believer out of himself, nor himself out of the believer. On the other hand, some maintain that a believer could choose to cast himself out of eternal life by unfaithfulness of some kind, but John 6.37 makes it clear that the only one who has the capacity to grant or deny eternal life is God himself, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Man is not stipulated in Scripture as having the capacity to grant or cancel his own eternal life. But all men do have the capacity to choose to believe of their own volition in God's Son for eternal life. In that interest, and they work together. We're not robots. We can choose to do what we choose to do of our own volition. Compare John 3, 15 to 16, which su support this point, especially since these verses contain the phrase rendered, For God so loved the world, implying that all mankind has the Son's payment for sin specifically made for all men of all ages since the beginning, and the phrase rendered so that whoever believes, literally whoever is the believing one, should never perish, but have everlasting God life. Now, the, what's in the middle of that verse is God so loved the world that he gave his one only son, the implication being payment for your sins, propitiation, that whosoever believes, literally whoever is the believing one, should never perish, never perish, ever, double negative, but have everlasting life. Notice that Jesus is claiming to have the authority and power of God over every individual's eternal destiny, a capacity exclusive to God, which he claimed in his testimony to the cloud, crowd, there he was speaking, when he fed the, the 5,000 plus. So, <clears throat> let's move on. All right, so we move down to this study, John 6, Observe 2.htm, and gone to 7b. And there it reads, I think I can move this down a little bit. The Jews were grumbling in disbelief about Jesus claiming to be the bread of eternal life from heaven. They remarked that they knew his, they knew his fa human father and mother. They limited their faith to what would best serve their own interests. Jesus told the Jews not to grumble among themselves about him, for no one was able to come by faith to him if the father who sent him did not draw him. He told them that on the last day, those who did believe, he will raise up to everlasting life. We've already gone over that. Although believing is volitional, and anyone may choose to believe in him, only those who are drawn by the Father will choose to come to Jesus by faith to receive eternal life. So what does that mean? Now, 
Recall, the Jews listening to Jesus have defeated 5,000 and they chased after him, went to Capernaum, and he starts preaching and teaching, especially the disciples. The Jews that followed were grumbling in disbelief about Jesus claiming to be the bread of eternal life from heaven. Well, from the very beginning when he started talking about that, they remarked that they knew his human father and mother. They limited their faith to what would best serve their own interests. Jesus told the Jews not to grumble among themselves but about him, for no one was able to come by faith to him if the Father who sent him did not draw him. It's like a negative. You don't believe because the Father didn't draw you. Yet they probably would say, what does that mean? Like you might be asking. So, Jesus told the Jews to grumble among themselves about him, not to grumble among themselves about him, for no one was able to come by faith to him as the Father who sent him did not draw him. He told them that on the last day, those who did believe in him will raise up, he will raise up to eternal life. And although believing is volitional, just take a look at the dictionary. It implies you choose to believe. Nobody gets forced into believing. And anyone who may choose to believe in him, but only those are, that are drawn, who are drawn by the Father, will actually choose to come to Jesus by faith in order to receive eternal life. And all that that entails. For God so loved the world that he gave his one only son. He propitiated. He's paid for the penalty for your sins. All the world, all mankind. A lot of people try to twist those verses around and many others. Because I could jump to 1 John 2 too. For he, Jesus, is the propitiation, the payment for our sins, believers' sins, and not for ours only, but the sins of the whole world. you got the whole world there. Not the world of the elect, as some try to maintain. So therefore, here are the verses. Therefore the Jews were grumbling about him because he said, I am the bread of life that came down, literally, literally having come down to heaven. That makes him to be God. And they were saying, Is not this Jesus the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? Alternate. Therefore, how does he now say, I have come down out of heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said to them, Murmur not, grumble not among yourselves. John 6, 44, No one is able to come to me if the Father who sent me may not draw him, and I will raise him up in the last day. Now come to him is already previously established in the context as to believe. Let me take a look at that. <clears throat> at the beginning of John 6, he feeds the 5,000. Let me get a little bigger here. And then they followed him. He went to Capernaum. And they went and followed him in search of him. They found out where he was on the other side of the lake in Capernaum. Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus said, very, very, I, very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. He's the bread of life. He's already established that, symbolically, figuratively. For on him, God the Father has placed the seal of approval. And then they go, what must we do to do the work God requires? Jesus answered, the work of God is this, which is no work at all, to believe in the one he sent. So, Believing is the operative word in order to get eternal life, to believe in the bread of life. All right, let's go back. So we established the context on this. Therefore, author John stipulated that the Jews were grumbling in disbelief about Jesus because he said, I am the bread of life that came down, literally having come down out of heaven, the bread of eternal life, John 6, 41. And John 6.42 corroborated their state of unbelief when they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say, I have come down out of heaven? Jesus answered them, Murmur not among yourselves about him. Get my picture back up there. Murmur not among, uh, among yourselves about him. No one is able to come to me, if the father who sent me may not draw him. What is that draw? And I will raise them up in the last day. Jesus acknowledged that they're not coming to him by faith. Oh, there's the faith thing. Was due to the Father not drawing them. John 6, 30, 43 to 44. Since not all will choose to believe in Jesus to receive eternal life. And since all who believe must be drawn by the Father. Then some are not going to be drawn by the Father. Ah. And although believe.